Hello everyone, it's a pleasure for me to introduce you to the Ocean Biodiversity Information System, or OBIS. I'm Ward Appeltans, I'm the project manager of OBIS. To start with, I'd like to give you a number of figures. At the moment, OBIS is providing access to over 60 million occurrence records of more than 130,000 marine species. It's also providing more than 55 million measurement of facts and we integrate information from more than 3,000 data sets. We have been recognized last year by the IUC member states that we are a global open access data information clearinghouse on ocean biodiversity to support science, and conservation and sustainable development. It all always started under the Census of Marine Life, which was a 10-year program funded mostly by the Sloan Foundation, which involved 80 countries thousands of scientists to document what lived, lives and will live in the ocean. And OBIS was, is one of the main legacies of the census of real life. At that time, 20 years ago, something like OBIS didn't exist. But they wanted, they had the vision that we should have a portal where someone could just select an area or a volume of water and then bring up the information on what has been reported to live there. That's what we did. That's what they have produced. But then, by the end of the census of marine life, they had to find a new home for all this. And the IUC member states of UNESCO decided that the knowledge of the ocean's biodiversity is of such importance to national and global environmental issues that the responsibility for all this continuing success should be assumed by governments. And they adopted all this as a project under the IUDE program. IUDE stands for the International Oceanographic Data and Information Exchange Program. Every program and every project under IUDE has a steering group. So we established steering groups. The secretariat and the data system moved from Rutgers University to the IC project office for IUDE in Belgium. And I got appointed in 2012 too as the project manager. The OBS nodes are either part of the IUD's National Oceanographic Data Centers, and if they are not part of the NODCs, they became uh, an IUD associate data unit. This year we celebrate, we are celebrating our 20th anniversary, and importantly, we also changed our name. We were Ocean the Ocean Biogeographic Information System before, and now we are called the Ocean Biodiversity Information System. Because we're part of the UN, we also got a lot of we also got some mandates uh, and mentions by a number of UN bodies, like the Convention on Biological Diversity called open office in 2010 at the Nagoya Conference of the Parties. The United Nations General Assembly mentioned us and they appreciated us for our contribution to marine science. And the member states of IOC called upon OBIS to support a number of international processes, like the global assessments under the Intergovernmental Science Policy Platform on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services. I'd always like to mention, to refer that OBIS is not just a data system, it's really an alliance and a network of collaborators, of people, of institutions that provide data, that develop tools, that provide training, and provide products. The network of OBIS, the data network of OBIS, is, consists of more than 1,000 institutions that are providing the data. They are providing the data to the 32 OBIS nodes. And then the OBIS nodes provide the data to the international OBIS. The steering group of OBIS is composed of the node managers. The node managers and this or the steering group, they develop the work plan and, and the budget and request the budget, which is then approved or adopted by the IUC committee on IUD, which is composed of the national coordinators in oceanographic data and information management. They submit this as a recommendation to the IUC assembly, which is composed of the 150 member states. And they adopt the work plan and budget. The work of OBIS is supported by a number of task teams and project teams. 
or capacity development taxonomy and communication. The bulk of the work in OVIS is done by the OVIS nodes. So they um, communicate with the data providers. They then standardize and quality control the data sets and publish it through the IPT. Central OVIS harvests the IPTs, do the indexing and do an, another level of QC. So in each step, there is a QC report to so make sure that the primary sources of the information is always up to date. Then we provide the data through our API uh, web service, which drives the portal and the mapper and the R package. The, we also serve data to GBIF, the Global Biodiversity Information Facility. And we do that by publishing, the Nobis nodes are doing this, by when they publish the resources on the IPT, they also registered the, the, the data sets to GBIF. One of our main clients, I, I can call them clients, are the, the global assessments, like the, the IPES global assessments, regional assessments. There's also the UN World Ocean Assessment, which will release the second version very soon. There will be a, a global assessment on harmful algal blooms. And, uh, and there are a number of interesting products and applications developed by Emonet in their Atlas of Marine Life. And I already mentioned the CBD, which is uh, identifying and selecting the, the ecologically or biologically significant areas. Of course, our major audience, I, I would say, are the scientists. And they are producing about 10 papers every month and using and citing all this. So, and we did an analysis on uh, who is actually in which, which which are the countries that make the scientists, uh, in which countries they make the most use of all this. And so we looked at the, co the country affiliations of the co-authors and then we could make this nice graph where you can see how uh, scientists are collaborating with each other and producing these papers together. So you can see a lot of collaboration with European, between European countries, also between Europe and the US and Australia and New Zealand and Canada. Uh, a, there's a lot less collaboration with the South, but it's not like non-existent either. There's also a lot less collaboration within those regions in the South. And so that's certainly an area we need to invest more and, uh, and build some more capacity. I would say uh, that open access to research supports equi equitable access and benefit sharing and can enhance international collaboration, but just providing open access is not enough. A major moment in the history of OBIS is when we signed a collaboration agreement with AMBON, the Marine Biodiversity Observation Network of GEOBON, and the Biology and Existence Panel of the Global Ocean Observing System, GOES. And where we, uh, where we agreed that we would collaborate on building a global marine biodiversity observing system. And we even got a quote from Pre President Barack Obama on this collaboration, which was great. One of the activities that Goose, the Global Ocean Observing System, is doing is defining and selecting the essential ocean variables. Um, and they have, this group has, uh, has selected a number of, of functional groups and habitat uh, EOVs. And uh, this is what OBIS is supporting. A major development that was necessary to support the EOVs was to expand our data format. So in the past, OBIS was mostly, I mean, only dealing with the occurrences which is the blue part. Uh, but when the, the event core came out, uh, we found that really interesting because we could use the event core to uh, document the, the monitoring and the, the, man, the monitoring protocols. We looked into the measurement of fact extension to, uh, to document all the biotic and, and abiotic measurements, and as well on the sampling and sampling facts. But we added a number of terms to make this possible. So that's why it's called the extended measurement effect extension. So we added the occurrence ID to be able to link measurements or facts to both the occurrence extension and the event core. We also added a number of IDs which link to controlled vocabularies. So for measurement type ID, value ID, and unit ID, 
because these things, because types, values, and units are free text fields, it was necessary to uh, to make sure to make data sets interoperable that we link it to a definition in a control vocabulary. So with Goose, uh, we are developing these data formats, uh, proposed data formats, like this one for habitat monitoring uh, was proposed for microalgae and seagrasses, where we use the event core, the occurrence extension, and the, and the measurement effect extension. I'm not going to go into details here, but I will always be, I'm always happy to share the slides. As I said, capacity development is a, a major activity of Wobus, and uh, I really would like to emphasize this once more. Uh, we've organized more than 20 training courses, trained people from 71 countries, and we are not. And we can do this with support of uh, many networks like Enbon and Emotnet. And we all use the, the e-learning platform, the Moodle that is provided by the Ocean Teacher Global Academy, which is also a a project under IUD and, uh, and they have set up a network of regional training centers so they train in, uh, in Spanish and French and English and Portuguese and Chinese uh, all over the world and so we provide the training material th through the Moodles through the Moodle courses and they can then, then be picked up by these regional training centers uh, I think it's a really nice uh, program and nice way to do to organize this. Okay, and my last slide is a little bit of a promotion on the UN Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development, which was proclaimed by the UN General Assembly and for which IOC, the Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission of UNESCO, is responsible for developing the uh, the implementation plan and the science action plan. And so there will be a call uh, soon for proposals on programs and projects. And I hope we can become part of a major marine biodiversity program under the UN decade. All right. Thank you.